Dr. Christian Fiala, welcome to the Robert Scott Bell Show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you on board. This is a big controversy. It has been for many years, and there was a big conference. Actually, were they simultaneous? You had one with they called the AIDS dissidents, the people questioning the cause of AIDS, and one that's the establishment, the big pharma group? Well, uh, the discussion should be normal in science because science actually is not a belief system like the church. Science is about discussing it. It should be normal. And the scandal with HIV AIDS is that uh, a discussion and dissent and asking critical questions is perceived and portrayed as being scandalous and uh, to be silenced. And that is re the real scandal. And it is somehow cynical that a Russian TV is coming uh, to help uh, people who are silenced in the West these days to show you to which extent politics has turned upside down. Yeah, you, we, normally we wouldn't have looked to the Russian press to cover a story legitimately like reporters are supposed to dig and find the facts and report on them. But in the West here, there's a total media blackout on doctors such as yourself and scientists who have questioned the cause of the immune system collapse or, or uh, let's say, reduction of immune function in those given an AIDS diagnosis. Uh, right, the censorship and the suppression of any critical, any critical comment is unparalleled. And the media in the West, they are scared to death and uh, there is absolutely no coverage whatsoever. And it was interesting that the Russian TV, they uh, got into a quarrel with WHO because uh, Russian TV wanted to do what seems to be normal job for a journalist, that is to cover both sides and bring a representative of both sides to discuss it in public. And WHO would refuse to send someone or name someone uh, for a discussion uh, with some of the critical uh, scientists. So the, the World Health Organization is now a religious institution that, that does not allow dissent. Well, being a doctor myself and feeling obliged uh, towards my patients um, more, much more than a feeling obliged to uh, work for the pharmaceutical industry, I have to say you are right, and I am very sad to see this uh, transformation of science and medicine into a belief system, because obviously uh, such a transformation will uh, be f to, uh, will do a, a huge damage to patients, because if patients' interests are not uh, discussed in public and in a transparent way, but if patients' interests are dictated by, by pharmaceutical uh, companies and lobbies, it, it's obvious that that will be to the huge disadvantage of patients. Dr. Fiala. Well, this, is, this is exactly what happened. Uh, actually, uh, there has been a high mortality of HIV uh, positive people in the early 90s because they got a treatment, what, is, what was called a treatment, uh, which was extremely toxic and killed most of them, which consisted of 1.5 uh, gram of AZT, which everyone recognizes nowadays is a lethal dose. So there, a whole generation of HIV positive people was wiped out, so to say, in the early 90s. And the only survivors of that time are those who refused the treatment. And uh, many of them are still alive today if they have no other health problems. And it is heartbreaking, really heartbreaking to listen to their stories, how the diagnosis of this, uh, of this test destroyed their, their, their social life and their families because of the hysteria of, of society. So have you personally seen as a medical physician uh, people that have so-called been given this positive test or tested positive and yet they have stayed off of the drugs and they're alive and well despite the so-called HIV diagnosis? Obviously, and I have also uh, some patients who have uh, turned negative again. So they have been positive for a while, and then after a while they suddenly turned negative. And the worst of all, you would think, oh, this is an interesting case. We would need to study and to understand better what's going on. But the, the treating doctor from the AIDS establishment, they just dismissed them and said, we don't want you to see, to see you any, any, anymore again. And uh, this is really, really uh, worrying because if, if science loses the basis, which is an open and free discussion, a competition of the best arguments, if we lose that, then we turn into a mediaeval belief system uh, with, with, with significant um, negative outcome and risk for patients. Yeah, you said a medieval, medieval and barbaric system 
that basically pursues people who may be immune deficient for many reasons due to nutritional deficiencies in the con continent of Africa. It's certainly the case. Lack of proper hygiene and sanitation. Basic concepts where poverty is bringing immune deficiency to the normal way of life, and yet the pharmaceutical industrial complex says, no, 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 it's a retrovirus. The only thing we can do are toxic drugs. We're going to research for billions of dollars, taxpayer money from around planet Earth to find what? A vaccine that will then stimulate antibodies that used to mean you're going to die. Now suddenly, how will they know it'll mean you live? Uh, exactly. And uh, if you think about our perception of the media at the time uh, was, well, people were believing in something. On, uh, even uh, if you think about the bloodletting, which even killed uh, one of your former presidents, George Washington, who, who was killed by bloodletting. And uh, we think, oh, these are past times and people have been a little bit well, not too bright, let's say, at these times, but we have advanced so much and we are much brighter now and we are much better now. But if you think about uh, and if you analyze what is happening with HIV, and you just mentioned Africa, we, we, the white, the Europeans and Americans, we go to Africa and we pretend that the solution for poverty is a drug which they have to buy at, a, at our pharmaceutical companies. I mean, how ridiculous can that be? How ideological can that be? So it is really worrying uh, that um, the mental state of science is, is turning towards an ideological privacy club, uh, somehow similar to the Catholic Church belief system. Yeah, right now in America, we're suffering under George W. Bush's third term. It's called the Barack Obama administration. And uh, Obama is looking to Bush's worldwide strategy on AIDS. You know, back in 2003, uh, he had launched the president's emergency plan for AIDS relief. They called this, uh, well, it's an alphabet soup of U.S. agencies working on PEPFAR around the world. That includes the CDC. And uh, I think the WHO as well, the USAID, the US, U.S. Agency for mm -hmm. International Development, which is related to the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. We have an mm -hmm. open collusion between stooge organizations of the pharmaceutical industrial complex. I am not surprised mm -hmm. by it. But what is astounding, Dr. Fiala, is that they've been able to suppress dissent within the scientific community for so long with the express purpose of keeping the HIV drug money gravy train dripping all over. Over Africa. As I said, the continent down there is not ravaged by HIV. It's nutritional deficiencies brought on by corruption, induced poverty, and Obama is looking more and more like G.W. Bush's third term. Well, the, the, I have been working in Africa, so I know the situation on the ground pretty well. And the two biggest problems of Africa, if you named it poverty, and the second big, uh, well, that's the first one, and the second biggest problem is uh, fertility, overpopulation. Um, so a, a continent which we are made to believe is dying because of a deadly epidemic actually has doubled its population within the last 20 years. And I can tell you from talking to people on the ground, my patients, they don't believe in this, they don't buy this HIV AIDS thing. They think, oh, that's just another scam from the white man. And the people in Francophone Africa, they view the abbreviation of AIDS, which in France, French is SIDA. They say SIDA is a syndrome inventé pour décourager les amoureux. In English, it is the invented syndrome to discourage those, the lovers. So the, the people on the ground, they're not stupid. They understand that this HIV AIDS is a, in a, has to be seen in the long tradition of colonization. And uh, many people in Africa, they have the feeling that HIV is just a new colonial instrument to sell them something which is not to their benefit. Mm. Yeah, indeed. And the movie House of Numbers by my friend Brent Leung is making ripples throughout the world because it shows the so-called AIDS scientists that they contradict one another about the testing, about how HIV does what they say. It's a supervillain beyond a Superman cartoon, and yet they are crumbling of their own weight because they don't have the science to back it up. All they have is force and fraud and religious cult-like belief. Dr. Christian Fiala, thank you so much. And I'm going to have you back on to report on the AIDS, uh, um, uh, well, what do they have, the, the big thing coming up there in uh, Vienna, Austria. Okay, you'll come back? Thank you very much. I will keep you updated. Uh